racist killing. We are Brooklyn. God, is this it then? Sparks an investigation. There are 15,000 Muslims in this city. No! If you or your contacts can come up with anything useful, I'll pay you. But the hunter becomes the hunted. Special services division, you fall. She disappeared. The prince have turned up all over your house. Something is going on, Paul. Disappeared? You know no one's gonna buy that. They're saying I killed her. Did you? Where are we? We need you to stay. Welcome to hell. Trevor Eve confronts a nightmare world in Black Easter. Sunday, 4th of June on BBC Two. BBC Two's eye-opening forbidden weekend is just minutes away, beginning with a suspected alien invasion in bad taste. The first X-rated film I ever saw was uh, Witchfinder General. It was 1968, I was 15, you had to be 16 to get into an X, so I had to bunk in. I had to get my mate who was much taller than me and had a bit of stubble to buy the tickets. And I was terribly anxious, I was going to get thrown out all the way through it, I was going to get sussed. And uh, it was wonderful, there was a, a nude scene in it and a great deal of violence and I loved it. I remember one, I remember one image of some, somebody's heel hitting somebody's eyeball and then coming away and there was a horrible kind of soggy mess. And I remember someone being burned to death. I think they were lowered into a fire. Um, and I remember the, the nude scene, which I wasn't expecting a nude scene, which was a real bonus. And Vincent Price played the Witchfinder General, riding around the countryside burning witches. And Ian Ogilvy played the good guy. And Vincent Price came to a horrible end when Ian Ogilvy axed him to death. I was on the balcony, I remember, and we used to, when we were kids, we used to throw ice creams over the top. And torture the people underneath us. But I was very quiet because I didn't want to get thrown out because I, uh, I was masquerading as an adult. As part of the celebration of cinema's centenary, BBC Two delves deep into the hidden depths of the film world for a strictly forbidden weekend. For the next three nights, we'll take you down the path of controversy and censorship. Your guide is Alex Cox. Welcome to the Forbidden Weekend, a screening of several controversial, banned or censored films and associated documentaries. The roster includes Ken Russell's The Devils, Liliana Caviani's The Night Porter, Ingmar Bergman's The Silence, and Donald Camel and Nicholas Rogue's Performance. Also to be seen are the best version of the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde story starring Frederick March. Bad Taste, a horror slasher zombie alien offering from New Zealand. Beat Girl, a mad film about juvenile delinquents and strippers from the 1950s. And Pastor Hall, a Bolting Brothers classic originally rejected by the British Board of Film Censors for its anti-fascist theme. All are being shown in the longest uncut version available. In the case of The Devils, we're showing the original British cinema release version as censored by the BBFC. The other films are being screened in the completest version that can be found. The performance was extensively re-edited by the studio prior to its submission, and it's not clear whether the director's original cut still exists. We're showing some very good films this weekend, and a couple of bad ones. You can decide for yourself which is which. It's great that certain films are at last being screened in their original version. 
But for me, it's also depressing that a large number of movies still cannot be screened. If it was up to me, this weekend would have to include The War Game, Peter Watkins' devastating docudrama about the effects of nuclear war on England, a film commissioned and then banned by the BBC. We'd also be showing Monty Hellman's Cockfighter, a film which can't be screened on TV or at the cinema in Britain due to cruelty to chickens. We'd definitely be screening In the Realm of the Senses, the classic Japanese film about obsessive sex. And we'd be ending the weekend with A Clockwork Orange, a film unseen for many years in Britain, apparently due to its director's belief that British people shouldn't be allowed to see it anymore. If these censored and banned films have anything in common, it's, in a way, the issue of censorship itself. That is, the individual's right to make up his or her own mind on the basis of all available information versus the state's desire to control and filter the information we receive. It's a particularly British issue. Unlike the Americans, we have no Bill of Rights, no Freedom of Information Act, no real idea of what our government is doing most of the time. No other European country, with the possible exception of Turkey, still has such a rigid and powerful film censorship board in place. Yet for the most part, we appear to accept this. As a nation, we seem to agree with our rulers that there are things we mustn't be allowed to see or hear or think. This is the theme of many of these banned and controversial films. Performance, and Roger Corman's The Trip, for instance, are about the individual's right to take mind-altering drugs, something the state secretly connives at and encourages as a population control device, but officially deplores. In The Devils, Ken Russell and Aldous Huxley point out that sexual and societal repression cannot be separated. The state which crushes the individual's sexual freedom seeks to destroy political and social independence too. They're the same. And Pastor Hall, a great British social drama about a small town in Germany during the rise of Hitler, was rejected by the British Board of Film Censors for its unfairness to the Nazis. Its message is that when a man loses his freedom, he ceases to be a man. That is, ironically, the message of A Clockwork Orange, too. Pushed to the limit by its sociopathic hero, its brutal young roughs drafted into the police force, and its cynical, public relations-obsessed state. <laughs> Bad Taste was made over a period of four and a half years by a New Zealander, Peter Jackson, whose most recent offering is the critically acclaimed Heavenly Creatures. He wrote, directed, produced Bad Taste, played one of the lead roles, photographed it, and did the special effects and makeup. All this was faithfully recorded in a documentary, Good Taste, which you can see straight after the film. It appears to be the story of a group of Earthmen out to destroy aliens and or their zombie human cohorts. It's an excursion into the land of Night of the Living Dead and early Cronenberg. Bad taste is from the get-go obviously intended to be funny, which doesn't really work to its advantage since the great charm and success of films like Night of the Living Dead and Rabid is that, in spite of bad acting and ridiculous special effects, they take themselves completely seriously. Night of the Living Dead is a very scary film because, despite humble means and amateur performances, it makes us suspend our disbelief and accept that an alien-based zombie spawn has taken over the Earth. In the same way as the Exorcist and the Evil Dead treat demons and demonic possession as if they were real, part of the tangible world. And though films like Bad Taste, Night of the Living Dead and the Evil Dead were made inexpensively, there have been major Hollywood sequels and remakes of both the latter films. The remakes invariably have even higher kill ratios. The number of people or zombies or aliens dispatched rival the body counts of John Woo. In a weird way, almost every modern action film has become a spaghetti western. There's no possibility of Arnold Schwarzenegger being defeated. Sly Stallone kills six guys with a single shot. His machine pistol never runs out of bullets. And according to the American Medical Association, most American 16-year-olds have watched 33,000 murders and 200,000 acts of violence on TV. An AMA study says television violence is the root cause of almost half of the 20,000 homicides committed in the United States each year. <laughs>